Bulls Nation, today I'm going to be answering more questions about the Chicago Bulls as we edge ever so closer to the beginning of preseason training camp and the regular season. And today I've got another few questions to ask to the Chicago Bulls fans, and I'll also give my answer to these questions. We did a video like this similar two two days ago, and the reality is there isn't too much to talk about in relation to the Chicago Bulls, at least in my opinion anyway. Nothing really too major happening around the Bulls at the moment. It looks like we're preparing for some of the biggest games of the Chicago Bulls in a long time. The regular season, obviously the preseason as well is going to be very important to determine the last spot on the roster and the potential two-way contracts. So without further ado, let's answer some of these questions in this video. Let's do it. What's going on everybody? It's the Aiden Sports Show and welcome back to another video. Today, we've got a Chicago Bulls related video and we're going to be answering a little bit more questions about the Chicago Bulls, some positives, some negatives, and obviously a little bit of my own opinion added into the situation. And you guys can let me know in the comments below whether you want me to talk more about this situation or not, and whether or not you guys want to even ask your own questions. But before we get started, please like and subscribe to the Aiden Sports Show YouTube channel. Turn notifications on and let me know in the comments below your thoughts about the Chicago Bulls and what are your answer to some of these questions that could potentially be arising and again please feel free to let you to um, put your own questions in the comments below that I could answer in a future video and we'll get started ladies and gentlemen the first question that I have for you guys today is who is the player that people sleep on the most for the Chicago Bulls when you look at the entire roster you look at it from start to finish who's the player that people sleep on the most? Who's the player that's going to end up being really good for the Chicago Bulls, but won't get a whole lot of credit coming into this upcoming season? And I have a pretty, I guess, controversial answer, because I feel like many people do give this player appreciation, especially when he did come to the Chicago Bulls pretty recently. But the player that I have for you today, ladies and gentlemen, is Nikola Vucevic. In my opinion, Nikola Vucevic is probably going to be the biggest player that's being slept on by the Chicago Bulls. I made a video about Nikola Vucevic not too long ago, and it got mixed reviews. A lot of people don't necessarily like Nikola Vucevic. A lot of people don't see the value in having Nikola Vucevic. And they and they really went in on him in many ways and how poor of a defender he could be and all these things. But the reality is this guy's a 20 and 10 monster at times for the Chicago Bulls. He's definitely a player that can hold the paint down offensively. And he is someone that, in my opinion, is a relatively underrated defender. But that is not his strong suit. And I can agree with you on that. But Nikola Vucevic, if he's able to adapt well with this new team and he's able to get that paint and make it his own, go into the post to become that really strong post presence and even go to the three-pointer here and there and the mid-range here and there and just show his offensive firepower for the Chicago Bulls. We have a really strong player here and he's a really strong player that makes the Mar de Rosa's job offensively a lot easier because the pressure's off of him. Zach Levine, we've already seen him and Zach Levine have a good connection and they both can play well together and Zach Levine loves playing with a strong big man in the Nikola Vucevic is going to be that. Lonzo Ball should be a lot better of a player in relation to this situation because of Nikola Vucevic and his ability to score as well. So there's not much of a situation in terms of Nikola Vucevic is going to be a terrible player. But again, people don't seem to like him or rate him on this team. And again, that's each to their own. That's not my place to say that I agree or disagree, even though I think he's a great player. And I think he will be a good player for the Chicago Bulls. And we'll see what happens. But he's definitely my pick for the most slept on player by the Chicago Bulls. And hopefully this season he, he can go out there and just show his true value offensively to a team and that's what we need him to be this is probably going to be the best team he's played on in his entire career and he's 30 years old he's made the playoffs before he has that experience behind him but he's not really done massive massive damage in the playoffs and that's something that needs to change with him as well and hopefully he could be in a team where his plus minus does improve because he doesn't have a great plus minus where he, he's able to contribute effectively efficiently and we're still winning games with him doing so these are things that have been an issue with Nikola Vucevic, and that's why people don't necessarily like the guy. But 
this is exactly what I feel like he's being slept on because I think he will do all these things. I think he will perform while we're winning games. I think his plus minus will be a lot better with the team that we have around him and hopefully he can make more damage in the playoffs. I guess only time will tell on that one. And that's my most slept on player. The next one is, who is going to have a breakout season for the Chicago Bulls? Out of everybody on the roster, who's going to break out and become a much better player than what they were last year? And the only, there's only one answer I think you could have to this, and maybe there is more, but for me, it's Patrick Williams. Patrick Williams is still going to be a good starter for the Chicago Bulls. He played a lot of his game time, actually all of his game time last year as a starter for the Chicago Bulls, and he had mixed uh, mixed performances, I would say. I think he was really good. He has tremendous upside, but again, there were some issues there in terms of leadership and aggression and being able to take effective shots, and he didn't always do that for the Chicago Bulls, but he was a very solid player and a player that played his role very, very well. And on this starting lineup at the moment, that could be a situation where we see again. One thing that I see him standing out from the rest of the pack, I think um, Patrick Williams is going to be an absolutely lethal rebounder for the Chicago Bulls this upcoming season. You already saw it against in the Summer League. This guy was grabbing boards effectively. It was aggressive. He snatched it from away from other players. He snatched it away from the year and he made his own. And, uh, and aggressive rebounders are the ones that will get the most rebounds on a team. And he, with Nikola Vucevic, could be a great defensive rebounding duo. And let's see if the Chicago Bulls can become a dominant rebounding team. Like what we were with Joe Kinora on the team. We were one of the best, if not the best, rebounding team in the NBA at that point in time. Can the Chicago Bulls do that again? When Nikola Vucevic averaging probably over 10 rebounds throughout the course of the season, at least that's what I think he will. Patrick Williams potentially averaging maybe 7 or 8 rebounds per game. Tony Bradley coming off the bench should be averaging decent rebounds. Alizé Johnson averaging 5 rebounds in only 18 games um, played for the Brooklyn Nets. We should be a dominant rebounding team, and let's hope that's the case for the Chicago Bulls. And Patrick Williams, scoring-wise, should have a good step in the right direction as well. He's going to be learning from some of the best players on the team, how to take effective mid-range shots, how to get your three-point shots, how to be play, how to play even a pick-and-pop game, because he is the power forward now. He should be setting a lot more screens. He should be going to the paint a lot more. He should be taking some open threes a lot more in this situation. And he's going to be a player that's going to get a lot of shots, because they're going to make sure they prioritize everybody else over Patrick Williams. So those shots he needs to take and he needs to make them. And if he could do that, he's having a breakout season in my opinion. The last question that I have for you, ladies and gentlemen, is what I'm most worried about for the Chicago Bulls this upcoming season. Now, at the end of the day, I've never been a guy to be talking relatively negative about the Chicago Bulls, because at the end of the day, we've done so many positive things. It doesn't feel right to talk negatively about the Bulls at the moment. But of course, with every upcoming season, there are some worries that you need to discuss, and there are some questions that need to be answered by the Chicago Bulls themselves. And my, I guess, question is, outside of Kobe White, Who's going to be a strong scorer off of the bench? Because at the moment, we have a really good system in terms of the transition game, the run and gun style of basketball. But if a team actually stops us from being able to do that, and there will be tactics out there from NBA teams that will stop the run from the Chicago Bulls, where are we going to get our buckets from from the bench? I don't know many people will answer the starting lineup. Some of the other guys from the starting lineup will be able to come on and play with the bench unit. And that's always a good solution as well. But I do feel like we need a another strong scorer coming off of the bench, at least an effective shooter to come off of the bench. Because three-point shooting off of the bench outside of Kobe White and Alex Caruso is not strong everywhere else. Derek Jones Jr. is not an effective three-point shooter. He shoots them, he can make them, but that's not his game. Elise Johnson, I don't expect him to make a whole lot of threes. Tony Bradley's not a three-point shooter at all. So it's basically left for Io, who I don't think is going to have a terrific three-point shooting season this year. Kobe White, who we all know he can make a three. Alex Caruso shoots a three at a high level, and hopefully with more shots, he can maintain that efficiency. We needed, I think we need another shooter coming off of this bench, and that's why I never ruled out Matt Thomas being a player we could sign, because we do need some three-point scoring. We do need someone that's going to take set shots, open shots, and make them as well. And again, that's where I see a lot of the maybe potential issues arising from the Chicago Bulls. We might not have another effective scorer coming off of the bench, especially with the lineup that we potentially will be using. That's my worry. Where's the scoring going to come from off of the bench? Because I don't want Zach Levine to play on this bench and shoot all the shots. Because the reality is, 
that's how a lot of the players, a lot of the teams will come back against us if we're relying too much on our starters. We need the bench to perform offensively and defensively. And there will be teams out there that will stop the transition game. So where are we going to score from from then? Because it can't just be Kobe White and Alex Caruso doing the scoring. And that's where I see a lot of the issues coming. And that's where I'm potentially worried about the Chicago Bulls. But again, that could be answered within... Four or five games. If we could see four or five games off this bench showing the way that they're going to be scoring for the majority of the year. Four or five games is only an example or, or I guess a, like a sample. Like, I feel like it'll be a sample size for the Chicago Bulls. Four or five games. Even preseason will be used in that way as well. Just to see how good this bench can be offensively. Because defensively, I don't have any issues. Transition-wise, I don't have any issues. But when we have to slow the game down, where's the scoring going to come from? That's why I like Thaddeus Young because he was always a good post-effective player. Larry Markkinen was always a good set shooter. So again, these two players that we no longer have on the Chicago Bulls could potentially be huge losses offensively. But defensively, we've gained something here with the players that we have. We could use Marco maybe. Marco seems like a good offensive player can dominate the paint and can shoot mid-ranges as well. So he could be effective. But again, we need to find, in my opinion, we need to find a new scorer from the Chicago Bulls that's not Alex Caruso or Kobe White. And let's see what happens. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, these issues can be solved very quickly. And it is a worry. Just because I feel like it's a worry doesn't mean I feel like I'm... I think it's going to happen. Like, we're not going to score coming off of the bench. Uh, there's not, not what I'm saying at all. A worry could always be resolved very quickly. Again, it's like, will Zach Levine play the next game? It's a worry. And in the end, he could be playing the next game. You know what I mean? It's that, it's that type of example. Who's going to be the scorer off of the bench? Oh, wow. Derek Jones Jr. dropped 15 points off the bench. He could be the guy that will be what, the third option on the team off of the bench. And he could be our third scoring option off of the bench. And that's what we want. That's what we need. So, again... We'll see what happens. I feel like Io could definitely be a good player to use in that area as well if he can develop Marco. There are options there. It's just if whether or not it fits, whether or not the Chicago Bulls can make sure that they get the right shots needed for them to play in these positions and become that scorer. I'm going to end this video here. I went a little bit overboard. I did have another question, but we'll save it for another video, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you're new. Have a wonderful and safe day, Bulls Nation. I'll see you in another Chicago Bulls video. Stay safe. Stay healthy, stay tuned for more. Take care and peace.